Hello, everybody, and welcome. I'm Jessica Abernathy, and with me today is Trisha Montgomery, and you are listening to Pets Are Family. Hola. Hi, Trisha. Hola. 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 We're taking I'm Spanish been, now. I've been taking Spanish lessons. It's called Duolingo, and I thought I'd take mm-hmm. Spanish lessons. So I, you know, like spare time. I'm like, okay. Yeah. All right. Bien, bien. <laughs> You're so uh anyway. Uh hi, how are you? Oh my god, do I do I detect a printer is gone in my future? A printer is gone. Look at that, check it out. I see I see some beautiful pictures over there and uh lovely little flowers and uh my goodness gracious, putting those New Year's resolutions and goals into action. Told you. Lovely. That printer was gonna be Lovely. gone this month. <laughs> I, I, love it, Jessica. I love that. Wow. Excellent. And see, I noticed because remember, that's all I used to see was the printer since you mentioned it. That's all I saw was that printer. So I'm excited to see it gone. You know, there you yeah. go. How you doing? I am excited. I am There's something. Yeah. Oh, sorry. We always, I always do that. <clears throat> that's okay. I, that's all right. I, the only person who notices it is Leroy. <laughs> so don't worry about it you know dad will be calling me after this you know dad will call me up and say hey you two need to stop talking over each other no he's the only one that notices it (laughs) so we are talking to somebody really and you've had a conversation with her and i have not i I am so excited to talk to her because i've i've you know really researched her as well and excited to talk to her yeah, we so we're going to be talking to we're talking to Nancy today, and she is a licensed psychiatrist here in Chicago, and she specializes in pet grieving, pet grief. So, and that's what her specialty is. And um, I found her. I was looking at something. I don't even remember what I was looking at on the internet, and I found her, and I was like, "We have a pet." counselor here in Chicago. And I'm like, and she's got a PhD. I was like, huh? All right. I was like, called her up. I was like, Hey, my name is Jessica. And I'm like, blah, blah, blah. And she called me back. I was like, cool. I was like, all right, let's go. And she's like, this is cool. So, and I um, talked to her for a little bit and she, she's just lovely. So I'm so excited to talk to her. So We'll see, but you know, we'll see how it goes. I'm, I'm just excited because it's just nice to get um, somebody else. And I figured if she works yeah. with the human world and wants to tie in the animal world, she has to be right. good people. You know what I mean? Because yeah. anybody that works in the human world and wants to bring in the animal world has to be good people. Good people. Good people. Let's go get her. I'm going to go, go, go. I'll be right back. Well, hello, and thank you for joining us today on our podcast. Um, we're honored to have you, and I am so excited that you joined us. I mean, thank I know this is like me. a con- yes, I know this is a conversation that like nobody wants to talk about, and it's like that conversation that everybody dreads. But I'm kind of excited to talk about it, just for the one fact that for me, you validate a lot of stuff for me. Um, because I'm the oddball in the group. <laughs> so um, when you and I talked on the phone the other day, um, Trisha will tell you that I've been talking about these three words that you have given me yeah. since then. Yes. And I've been talking about it. I talked about it on our last podcast and I've talked to her about it, but the I, the um, damage of judgment have been like my, my favorite three words like yeah. all week long. Um, right. so I told Trisha, I had like so excited about you coming and talking with us and everybody else. So just so you know, yeah. you've been on, you've been talked about a lot <laughs> already. So well, uh, glad I, to I, hear I, I, and I love them. I, I love them too, Nancy, and such an honor to meet you and just you. really important topic and what we're talking about right now. Thank you. Absolutely. Yes. I'm so honored to be here. This is something that is needed and you know, your platform is going to really be helpful to so many. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. So um, please let, you know what I mean? Because I keep calling you Nancy, but please tell us a little bit about you and give a little bit about, so our audience knows 
why I'm so excited to talk to you, but give our audience just a little bit about yourself so that they know um, why I'm excited to talk to you today. Well, I'm a licensed clinical psychologist in Chicago and Michigan, in Illinois and Michigan, and in 48 states through the PsychPEC um, national license. And I've taken, I have a lot of specialties and I've loved them all, but the one that I have really come to in my um, maturity as a psychologist is helping people grieve the loss of a pet. And that has been my mission since 2009 when I became certified in pet loss and bereavement. And I really worked towards making that uh, a goal that I can spread as much information and destigmatize the um, the impact that grief has on our yeah. society, specifically pet loss. Pet loss is one of the most disrespected griefs in our society because we believe that it is. it can be marginalized, it can be replaced, it can be um, forgotten so easily. And that can be anything from further from the truth. And so I agree. my mission is to help individuals help themselves not feel so stigmatized um, for having grief or for having this love relationship that has been so meaningful for, to them in their life, even when no one else can understand it. I, I, and I know this is going to be, Trisha's going to be jumping in all over the place because this is just, you know what I mean? Yeah. This is, this really should be her interview, not mine because she just, you know, over, yeah, she's over there, but it is a topic of, it's a very touchy topic. It's a topic that, you know, we should be talking about more and more. And you're right. It is a topic that most people. Yeah. And most people just don't understand it. And when you lose a pet, that is your heart, as I call it, your heart animal, there are animals that are our pets that just, Mm -hmm. we love them, but there's other ones that hit your heart that, I mean, just, they knock you, they knock everything out of you because they're just, Mm -hmm. they're, they're soul crushing. You know what I mean? There's just something about them that just, they take everything out of you. And nobody can understand that until they meet their heart animal. You know what I mean? And when they meet their heart animal and it happens to them, they're just, they turn around and look at you and they're like, I am so sorry for not understanding when you went through it, you know? Absolutely. And it's just, it's just, it's devastating. And it, until they go through it, it's really hard to explain it. And in, My question to you right now is, is like, how do you explain to somebody the difference between the two griefs? You know what I mean? Like there's a, there's a grief of losing a friend. There's a grief of losing a grandparent. There's a grief of losing a parent. And there's a grief of losing your best friend, which is a pet, but there's no validation for that best friend. I mean, I come home every day and Teddy meets me at the door and my dog just recently went blind before he would run and get himself a baby, come meet me at the door with the baby. And I would sit there and play with him. Now he just meets me at the door as he gets there. And now he just jumps up and down. He's like, you're home. And it's, you know what I mean? He just changed the thing, but it's always that excitement. He's my best friend, you know, but that's not validated in the, in most worlds right now. You know, if I lose him. And it's, it's the best friend who is so available to you. It is like no other relationship. Mm-hmm. A best friend you can call if you're feeling sad or upset. But not every night, not every hour, and certainly not at three in the morning, every night. However, your heart animal, if you wake up upset, they're not saying, you know what, you're going to need to call someone else. They're yeah. like, what else can I do for you? I'm here for you. I'm sitting with you and I'll be here every night with you for as long as it takes. And And that can't be replaced. Nope. And just they're absorbing that. They're absorbing everything. And um, I I love what you just said uh, as far as that, you know, people not understanding. And I, I use the term just a. It was just a, it was just a dog. It was just a, you know, and we had this conversation with uh, Lisa of Thorns Promise and people discount, well, you know, you only had him two years. You only had him, you know, this amount of time. And 
Uh, and that doesn't matter, does it, Nancy? Or Absolutely Dr. not. Nancy? <laughs> love is not yeah. coming, Nancy. Love is yeah. not measured in time. Yeah. Love no. is measured in intensity. You And I work with so many individuals who have loved and have received love two weeks, 15 years. Yeah. And the grief is often similar. And it's hard for someone who doesn't understand that type of connection to quantify that two weeks versus 15 years. Yeah. That doesn't make any sense to them because you're looking at it linearly and pet grief or pet connection and the, the love you feel and the love you give to a pet is unlike any other experience you have. Mm -hmm. And it shouldn't be marginalized. It is not to no. be marginalized. Someone who no. loves their pet for two weeks and is grieving deserves the same respect and the same attention someone who lost their pet of 15 years. Because these animals come into our lives at a specific time and they create a connection that fills us in so many ways that oftentimes it takes us a long time to create the words and to find the words to justify this connection. And to legitimize this connection. I can tell someone saw, had a pet from ten, for 10 years and they haven't talked about it in five. And I'll ask, well, what's different now? It's like, I finally found the words to describe what it felt like to be loved by this beautiful animal. Yeah. Wow. And that takes time. Our body has yeah. to feel. Our body has to connect. I often say when you experience grief, it is like you have a beautiful puzzle of your life and your pet is with you. And all of a sudden it fell to the ground and it has shattered in a million pieces. And while you know this picture will never look the same, your brain hasn't caught up and it yeah. is constantly looking for evidence that it's not true. It's constantly looking for evidence that it will come back because mm -hmm. it is so hard to accept that this experience, this love, this connection is no longer here. Yeah. And I imagine that many of us, I've experienced it, many of us have experienced that sense of endness. It's over. It's never going to come back. I yeah. am gutted. I am alone. I feel isolated. And one of the things That's, I think about... Yeah. <clears throat> It's yeah. so true. It, I mean, it, it's so true. And that was like, and that goes into my next question I was going to ask. What do we do? You know, I mean, like, especially like we're going into the the worst months of that, too. I mean, it's after the holidays. You know, half of us are broke. It's for us people that are in the oh. north, as I keep, yeah, is I keep t picking on Trisha in the north where it's bloody cold. We're locked into our houses. You know, I mean, here in, in Chicago, we're supposed to get 12 inches starting tomorrow. Oh. So we're going to be isolated in our houses. I mean, what do we do? Because our, like, how does that affect our mental health? How does that affect people? And what can we do to not go down spiraling into a hole that's not Absolutely. good? I mean, I, I know it's not good, you know what I mean? But how do we, when you're in that place that we're talking about right now, how do we get ourselves out or how do we prevent ourselves from going in? You know what I mean? That rabbit hole, that's not healthy. That's a great question. And I think all of us have been there, especially if you're from the Midwest. And if you're grieving, whether you're grieving in the sun or you're grieving in Chicago yeah. in the middle of the winter, grief yeah. is grief. Yeah, it's grief true. Is grief. And so you're talking about a unique period in our life after a holiday. We're talking about a Christmas yeah. holiday, but it could be any holiday, any holiday you find special to you. It could be summer holidays. It could be um, fall holidays. It could be summer holidays. Those holidays might be meaningful to you. And you find yourself after the holidays more isolated and feeling disconnected. And today we're talking about how to mitigate that. If it is mitigatable, can we mitigate this experience? Sure. And the answer is yes, we can. It doesn't come to us immediately but it is mitigatable. And one way I help individuals recognize this is to ask themselves, what are you feeling right now? Because every feeling has a need. 
It's like, I feel alone. I feel isolated. If you ask that feeling, what does it need? It will tell you. Generally, it's, I want my cat back. That's what it needs. I want my dog back. I want my bird back. Like, all right, what else does it need? It needs to feel the warmth. It needs to feel energy. It needs to feel a connection. What else does it need? And you come up with a list of things. And what you realize is all of these things can be found in community, in connection, and in your love bank. Mm, I love, love that bank. word. I do. I love love bank. I, I do love, love that. that. Oh, my God. Your love I, bank. Yeah. I love that. Trish is like probably flying all over there going, of the oh my love God, she you got. That. <laughs> your love, love that. bank is all the love you got from your pet. Oh, all yes. the love. All the moments you woke up and they were right there. Are you okay? Deposit to your love bank. Every time yep. they ran up to you when you went to open the door, deposit in your I, love I bank. I literally am just getting chills right now. I yeah. These God. this is your love bank and whether your bank is two weeks old, it on, you only had it for two weeks, or you had it for 16 years, you have access to your love bank. Because when they leave us, we keep the love. Yeah. Why does it feel that we're not keep, why, why does it feel that it's suddenly gone? Why does it feel like, like your heart's broken and like your piece of your heart's gone and you can't ever recover that? Why does it feel like you're like jerked away, you know? It's true. Pieces of you feel broken. Pieces of you feel like they can't recover. And the human element is resiliency. We will get through it. We don't feel it in that moment. You're right, because a broken piece never feels whole again. That's true. Yeah. Right. What shapes it is your love bank. Okay. What is in that bank? We get to draw from it. Your ability. Oh, and identifying I what this feeling needs supports that goal. Yeah. What do I need? I learned about the love bank and marriage counseling. <laughs> if you could believe that, but I, I loved the love bank then. But I, 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 I prefer, yeah, I was going to say I'm not married to that husband anymore. But I really prefer it with my animals than my, that ex husband. But I love that for the animals, and I do yeah. love the love bank thought because that's so true because yes. I do love that love bank and it's that, that hits home more <laughs> with my animals than it did with my ex-husband that totally works for me way better I, it's more valuable than my them. HSA <laughs> yes it, but it is I mean because I think about all the you know because Teddy Teddy like I said Teddy's gone blind you know what I mean and you know we're you know he's got a vet appointment he's slowing down and you know what i mean he's getting more bumps and lumps and you know and things like that you know so i'm taking more pictures and i'm trying to make sure that we you know do little things with um, him. yeah that's deposits i'm trying to make sure that way when he does correct. have to leave because i'm more realistic that I, you know he's getting up there i want to make sure that i have more sentimental and more you know things i've got a I got, my sister made me a picture. It's over there. I don't know if you guys could see it. She made me a, she hand, uh, cr uh, not hand stitched, but she um, cross stitched me a picture of Teddy. Up, and I have it up on my wall. So that anytime I'm zooming, I can mm -hmm. see it, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, it's, those are my little deposits I'm making. So that's, that's kind of something into my next question I want to ask you is like, what can we do? You know what I mean? Like we're talking about like these isolations and going down these rabbit holes and, you know, what I mean, what can we do to help cope with, you know, this depression of like, I've lost, you know, I've lost yep. my animal, my best friend, my heart dog, you know, what I mean, like, right, I'm just going to use you, Trisha, for an example, you know, what I mean, she lost moose, she was devastated, I wasn't around them. But I mean, I know, and I know how, how much moose means to her. I mean, even years mm -hmm. later, because when we talk about him, she still wells up, which is fine. And she still, I mean, is torn up about him. But, you know, one of the things she did is she started a non for profit and we're working, you know, she doing that. Legacy. That's what she, yeah, she's building his legacy. You know what I mean? I am right. not doing that for Teddy. But, you know what I mean, I have tons of pictures. I'll probably do something fun with him. But you get what I'm asking. What can what can we do to kind of cope with that? You know, I mean, what, what can we, what can other people do? Like, 
down from well, not think, have, building a not for profit up to, hey, you know, maybe we will. Well, <laughs> you know? well I think there are different degrees. tools. What are right. tools that we can use? Yeah. yeah. There are different degrees of legacy build, development. And legacy right. development begins with recognizing how much I've been loved. Legacy development, is that what yes. you said? Yes, legacy development. These words. Yes, so I know. Legacy I have development. A feeling, how, that's I have a what you're talking be... about. What can I do yeah. in our right. isolation? Is when we're once we accept they're gone and I have a full love bank, I can now develop legacy. And legacy is can be a foundation. That's fantastic. I'm so that's just fantastic, and I'm so proud, and it's wonderful. And it could be. I baked their favorite biscuits and I deposit them at the local shelter in their name. That's brilliant. Right. And I was just sitting there thinking oh, when you wow. said that, I mean, you could do the breast cancer walk or a cancer walk in honor of, you know what I mean? Like Teddy went blind. I could go do one of the Absolutely. blind walks in honor of Teddy, you know, that you know, we could Absolutely. do, you know what I mean? And that, and raise the Absolutely. money. And, and include your that. team. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah. And all organizations. I don't think that people think about that. I think some people are so immersed in, in the in the wallow. Not the it's a wallow. It's a pity party. It's it's, it's been but, but we're deserving it's of it. And I I think we're so ingrained in that we don't we can't see the force of the tree. We can't get out of our grief. How do we climb out of that grief? Right. I guess so we better we let her answer the questions. <laughs> first, we want Sorry. to recognize that loss is destabilizing. The loss of a pet destabilizes us. Yeah. Yeah. That once you know I've been destabilized, all of a sudden you have compassion for yourself. Of course, it's hard to get out of bed. I have been destabilized. There's a part of me that has been broken off. When you break off a leg of a chair, is it stable? No. No. When you lose your heart animal, can you imagine being stable? You are destabilizing. No. Our animals play not only a love role, but a stabilizing role. And in, yeah. what I mean by stabilizing is they also provide structure. Yeah. I get up at a certain time. I make plans around my resources, my time, my vacation. They stabilize us in so many ways that yeah. when they are no longer here, we come to... We come to face how important they were and how many spaces they took up in our lives. Wow. Destabilizing. So the first thing is to recognize I have, I'm destabilized right now. And what do you do? I look for supports. And a support could be a friend, an online community. Yeah. It could be a chat room. It could be reaching out to your faith-based leaders. Because almost every faith, and I've interviewed several, all make room for pet grief. Some allow you to have memorials. Some allow. Some have blue masses or um, pet grief masses. Almost every faith, and generally in October. And I think the Buddhists have it in May because they have a holiday in May right. that honors yeah. animals. Um, but most um, Judeo-Christian yeah. is um, they celebrate it or honor their pets in uh, October. St. Francis of the Sissi. St. Francis. Yes, St. Francis of the Sissi. And um, many synagogues also make space for uh, in October, not for Frank St. Francis, but make space for the value of life in your home and that is no longer here. And so that there's a mass or a, a, uh, a temple sitting for individuals who belong to that synagogue. And it has been most stabilizing. Again, stabilizing. What is going to stabilize me? Connection, reaching out, journaling. Once we get it out, it's on paper. It can't get any it. bigger. These words that you're giving us. Yeah. Wow. I mean, they're deep. They're, they're it yeah. Deep. It is deep. It is. But they're deep. So simple. They're, they're deep, deep, but they're simple. Stabilizing, you know, <laughs> You know, love, uh, love, I love I'm just, I am blown away. And we've been talking about grief for a while now, Jessica. We, we have, and, you know, yeah. even more so. I, I was involved in the very first um, 
with the Chicago Veterinary Medical Association, they had the WINGS pet loss support, and it was through Drs. Emo and Mary Bockert. And it was a veterinary-run uh, pet loss support group, and they used to meet monthly on Ogden mm-hmm. Avenue in Hinsdale, Illinois. And um, just a phenomenal organization, and they had a saying of, whether furred, feathered, or fin, every loss is deep and meaningful, and just, you know, and just, I am... To be talking about this now and to continue this conversation because then it was, and I think it's still, like you said, Jessica and, and Nancy, people still don't talk about it. It's still. It's very marginalized. Oh, no, absolutely. Know. We had, we had this conversation that people judge you because you don't grieve, that you don't right. cry. Right. Yeah. Because the yeah. face of grief I, is I'm, plenty. Mm-hmm. The many faces I, I, of grief. that, I that movie in the seventies? There are many yeah. faces of grief. Yeah, I was going to say, it's not that I don't grieve. I just don't outwardly grieve. It's like I don't sit there and do the, <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm not a, I'm not a weeper and I'm not, I, my father just raised me to be very, no offense to the men, but a, be more male-like, you know what I mean? You know, we don't have time for crying. You've got to get your, your crap done, you know what I mean? You know? You're supposed to keep everybody going. Your your job is to, you know, my father raised me to be more of the head of the family. You, everybody needs to get stuff done. And, you know, when you're alone, that's your time. You know what I mean? It just it, that's how and I've Nancy, always been. You know, I'm going to ask you this someday, somewhere, somehow, something inside of Jessica is going to like implode and she's just going to go. And everything that has been inside her is going to come out regarding all the grief she's had. No, you know, I, mean, I, I get I this do. question quite a bit with couples, with couples. Is he ever going to experience it? Is he ever going to break down? You know, this information we, is not just useful in grief. It also yeah. educates us because when we shift, because we all grow and develop, how we manage grief today may not be the same way we manage grief in five years. You'll have this information. And it'll be available to you. Yeah. I mean, I, I do grieve. I mean, it's, but I just grieve yep. differently. I grieve by myself or I grieve when I'm home. You know what I mean? I just grieve differently, but it's also like, like we've talked about it, but I also deal with like all my personal issues, like all my medical issues. You know what I mean? People are like, mm-hmm. I don't know how you are dealing with this. I mean, even my psychiatrist told me the other day, she's like, I'd be a ball in the kitchen <laughs> on the floor drinking. And I'm like, I don't have time for that. <laughs> like, you're resilient. You know? You're resilient. Yeah, I, just, I just don't have time for that. You know, just keep moving, you know, until the next surgery. Yeah, that's it. You know, it's just like, it's just oh, move on next. You know, every once in a while I'll have a pity party, but you know, I mean, who cares? I mean, that's the thing, you know, it's, it's not going to get me good, do anything for me. You know what I mean? You just, you have to figure out when you need to do it. And that's kind of how I look at grief. It's like, I can cry and it's okay. There's no reason why you can't cry, but there's no reason why I have to sit there out in public and sit there and go, <gasps> you know what I mean? It's just, I give myself the space to do it and move on. And I, that's I just, an example I don't, of self-compassion. That's an example of yeah. self-compassion. You allow yourself to grieve in the way that you can. And that's okay. Yeah. There's no comparison. The worst thing that anyone can do is judge each other's grief. Yeah. I get judged a lot, though. (laughs) And that's unfortunate. That really is. Because how you grieve is exactly how you need to grieve today. It doesn't mean you'll grieve this way tomorrow or at your next pet. How you grieve is exactly the way you needed to grieve. It doesn't judge how you love or whether you love more or love less. It is where you are. And that's the message I keep giving out in my support groups. We, and I have a list of rules, do's and don'ts. We don't judge each other for grieving. If someone is crying and someone is not, that is their right to grieve the way they want to grieve. I also, and this is the interesting part about all that when you say that, I mean, I, granted, we're talking about pet grief, you know what I mean? But grief is grief, you know what I mean? And if you grief think about grief. it, you know what I mean? And I've been, I've been judged a lot about my grief, you know what I mean? And that's fine. And I have been yelled at, at many wakes and funerals. Um, and I've actually had a couple people ask me to leave a wake many a times, you know what I mean? 
eh, whatever. Um, half of them are my family members, which, you know, <clears throat> I can't say those words on this thing because I want to stay on Apple. So, um, but my thing is, is that I usually tell people, I'm like, this is not what they wanted. I mean, if you think about what you want at your funeral, you do not want people sitting around crying for you. You always tell everybody, have a party. I want a party. I want you to sit around. I want you laughing. I want you to tell stories about what we did that was stupid. You know what I mean? I want you to have a couple cocktails. I want you to sell. You, that's what everybody says. Nobody does it. Except for me, I'm the Yahoo that sits there and tries to tell the funny stories because that's what you want. And there's room for that in Peccary because of virtual memorials. Right. Yeah. Virtual memorials yeah. offer the griever every different type of person who came in contact with their pet. And some people have great funny stories and some people have meaning, other types of meaningful stories. The pet memorials, this is another thing, in your isolation, Pet memorials, virtual ones specifically, support you. Talk talk about that, Nancy. Talk about what because for for people may not know what a virtual you know what it is. Talk about that. A, pet, a virtual about. memorial is very similar to any memorial. Okay. Before the in the internet, people would have visitations. Their pets had yeah. passed. They're laid out, and people would visit them. There'd be a poem read, a service, and you give condolences. Our pets, people move around. Our pets are wide. They have a lot of relationships. We think that we are their only relationship, but their dog walker, your neighbor, the child who walks by your window and sees your cat in the window, these are all relationships they have developed. Yeah. And so a pet memorial helps you, the griever, see their large footprint, their large paw print, I should yeah. say, in yeah. the world and how much meaning they had, not just you, because we want it to be us. They only meant something to me. Yeah. But they meant so much more. Their love was very open. And a pet memorial, you can load up a picture, a lot of different organizations, the Association for Pet Loss and Bereavement, it's $25. You load up a picture, you put the link on your social media, or you send it to people. People go in and write stories or record videos about how beautiful in their relationship with your pet or post a picture that you forgot they took and how meaningful that is for you. I love that. I remember when Moose had, whenever I, it was literally within two weeks that he was gone, but then I obviously I'd gone to the veterinarian to Auburn and just, and then I told people what was going on and everybody wanted to come because I was at that time I was C, you know, CEO for Paws Humane Society, I had been CEO and everybody knew Moose. Everybody knew yeah. Moose. And, you know, from the pet people for the pet food pantry to, mm-hmm. you know, Mayor Skip Henderson, you know, all these people knew Moose yep. because he was such a mascot and such a, yeah. a character and people wanted to come by. And I allowed them to, you know, and his dog his babysitter and you know mm-hmm. the people that when he, he was first rescued from Columbus Animal Care and Control and bringing him over people wanted to come see and you know people that I hadn't heard from in like a never even it, like I saw this can I come by and see him and it hurt me to do that but I knew that I had to give them that I'm gonna use your grace to do that because they needed that mm-hmm. so yeah you know when I work with celebrity pets and celebrity pets who ha- celebrities who have pets or celebrity pets, one of the questions is how do I handle all the love that I'm getting? Because it can be overwhelming in your grief. And we start ahead of time. You know, usually I'm getting called right before the pet has passed. If it's a celebrity pet, a pet who's a celebrity, I talk about here are some FAQs. You already want to have the foundation identified who you want, instead of having a florist version of in your house full of flowers, in lieu of flowers, please donate in their name to XYZ Foundations. Right. Um, talk about your experience. If there's a service, there's a service, there's a link, there's a link. Try and mitigate um, because you have enough going on grieving yourself and grieving if you have children, the children in your life or the other family members. Everyone else wants to grieve with you. And understandably so, they're a celebrity pet. But it doesn't mean you have to take it on. Yeah. Identifying these kind of things helps you grieve. 
Yeah. Very true. I mean, I, and the guilt, because you get the guilt because you're, you're like, uh, you know, he's not feeling good. You know, oh, I just for a minute, I just want to, and it's like, oh, then you feel guilty for saying no, you know, no. Mm-hmm. I know, Lord, I hate to say no, but I know, you know. And in light of what we have now with the internet and video, we could do video clips. And I encourage people to have a pet page, like a health page for humans when they're going through cancer, a pet page. Yeah. Here's the updates. Wow. Here's the newest video. And they can record videos. Hey, Buster, I'm with you. You're looking great. I see you're wearing that collar. Send that off. You want to see it. Yeah. And show it to your pet. Look. Your Uncle Bill is loving the collar you had. And it fills you. And it fills that moment that is anticipatory. I'm waiting. I gave me chills. And I don't get chills very often. Trisha will tell you, I'm not, I'm not that girl. But that gave me chills because I'm like, oh. I think I love you. I think, I think I'm think i going to tell you that. I just, I love everything that you represent and everything that you're doing. And I've never, you know, we've talked a lot, but I, I've never put it in this type of a terminology before in this, in, in this, you know, in, in this platform before. So thank you. Gosh. Absolutely. There's so much amazing. to talk about. So much it to is. talk about. There is a yeah. lot. I mean, that's just, it's, I, I love that you validate everybody. It's, it's okay to be, it's yeah. okay to be no matter where you are on your spectrum. It's okay. You know what I mean? It's okay to be, you can, you, you can replace them right away because that's how you deal with it to, it might take you 10 years to, you know what I mean? You, you volunteer at the shelter and that's how you give back to, you start your own organization to, you know what I mean? It's okay. Mm-hmm. However you memorialize, you know, your pet, you know, there's, it's okay. And the language you know I mean? use, the language I use around that is not necessarily replaced, though I know a lot of people do use that language. Right. I say continue to love because you can, grieve, you can continue, continue to, to love. love. If you, if you have love to give, give it. This is the number one question. Am I betraying them because I want to adopt another pet? Yeah. Nope. I said, if you have love to give, give it because you can grieve and love at the same time. I, I have a really beautiful friend, Rhonda Siegel, lost her dog Reich into cancer very suddenly, hemangiosarcomia. And um, she's just now getting another dog. I think she lost him, what, Jessica, maybe two and a half months ago. I think that was it. Um, and she's just now getting another pup. And she's, you know, she says it's bittersweet, very bittersweet, that she, but she's got to have, you know, that I've not been able to get a dog. Okay. Yeah, still haven't. I've considered one. I actually was going to get one, but I still, it's like a part of me just, I don't know. I can't, I can't do it right now. I can, I can foster dogs. I can babysit dogs, you know, but there's something about, you know, and I'll still use Moose's things Mm -hmm. to even feed them. And, you know, and and it'll be a piece of him there, you know, Mm -hmm. and this is, I'm like, this is Moose's. You be careful with this, you know, (laughs) you bring them in, you bring Moose into the creation and that way you honor them. Yeah. I still can't change my, my phone, my, you know, my screensaver. It's got Moose, you know, Mm -hmm. still can't, can't change it because that was the last one. I still keep in my car, his last toy that we got that he picked out, you know, so and the best, the great thing about that is no one has to do anything. Yeah. You don't mm-hmm. have to change the picture. You don't no. have to take the toy out. That's what we put on these constrictions. I should change my screen saver. Who says? Yeah. Right. Who says? Eliminate right. that. No one is policing you. Another thing to think about in isolation is to consider what is it that I can do that will tell people about my pet. A foundation is one. For children, I don't, I'm a trained child therapist, but I haven't treated children in many, many years. Parents (coughs) ask me, what do I do? They don't want to have a I was just going to ask you that. They feel so guilty. I said, what they need right now is community. And all their friends know their pet, their cat, their gerbil, their turtle died. It's like, but she doesn't want to party. I said, let's talk about it in another way. Let's, no gifts. Just gifts, collars and leashes, pet food, and she can take it after her party and donate it in her pet's name. Yeah. That way you get both. You have the community of friendship, 
mm-hmm. and you get distracted. You're playing and she's doing the things or your daughter's doing the things. And the guilt is like, well, is it okay for me to have fun? Yes. Cause now we have this beautiful gift <coughs> to donate in Buster's name and Fluffy's name. And the yeah. child recognizes I can continue. I can be loved and I can continue loving in my beloved pet's honor. And that is an example of what Warden's grief model says is that's what growing in grief is. Yeah, I continue yeah. my life is a growing around your grief. What do you feel? How do you feel about, and it, I'm, I have to ask this because I am, I'm an olderish. Okay. Trisha hates this, but I'm an olderish adult that I still hold it against one of my family friends that um, she babysat my guinea pig. <laughs> and when I came home, she told me it ran away because she didn't have the heart to tell me it died. <laughs> and, and, and I held it against her my whole childhood. And not until I was in my 30s did she tell me that it actually died. I mean, she really truly told me it ran away and I believed her. I mean, I was like mm-hmm. six when she told me that. And I held it against her for all my life. And then literally I was at her house for something else. And she's like, you do realize that that guinea pig died, right? And I was like, no, <laughs> I really thought it ran away. I mean, why would I ever believe her any other reason? You know, and I kept, I drilled her for years as a child of why she let that guinea pig outside. <laughs> I was like, we don't do that. Imagine I mean, there's, a part I, of you, there's a part of you that didn't believe it. Like, guinea pigs running away oh no but see, that's that part, part of is, you this no the sad part is is that we actually did take them outside and let them run around <laughs> so i just didn't understand why she did it though because i was like why right. would you do that right. you're you know i'm like you don't understand how to do it <laughs> oh, but right. i just didn't understand i guess i i just i guess in my head i because i'm i'm the oddball remember in my head in a way it's like i think as a kid because I wound up losing a dog later that year and they explained to me where my dog went. So I don't understand mm-hmm. why they didn't explain to me that my guinea pig died. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it, and it, I don't know why people do that to kids. I guess I'm asking, is it wrong yeah. to not, you know what I mean? Cause to me, it was wrong to well, tell this, me that you, you get yes. where I'm going with this. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Absolutely. And this parents say, should I just say they went to sleep? Should I just say that, they went on vacation. Should I just say they ran away at the circus? I said, I would ask them this question. I said, if you don't tell them who will. Yeah. I like that. I like that right there. I like yeah. that. You don't tell them who will. Yeah. And when you don't tell them and you tell them a story that isn't true, trust is eroded during a most very sensitive. I've never believed Miss Jenny since. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you have come to forgive, which I, helps you. Not and really. Her. <laughs> yeah, and I think the things that happen within your childhood, those not scar you, but you you carry them with you, just like you, Jessica, just like my parents. You know about Jacques. You know, it's like okay, just okay. <laughs> you know? It's I don't think that they know what to, and I think people don't know what to do. So I think they're trying to protect. They're trying to be helpful. And you can't blame them, but yeah, words mean things. Honesty is always the best relationship developer in a time of crisis. Yeah, yeah, I get that. I mean, I don't know what to say to them. There are so many resources available, and on my website, I have um, I break down the stages of grief for every child stage and development, and give things to do and what parents can say. I will definitely link that into into the show notes. (laughs) I will definitely put that in the show notes. It has been an honor to have you. How can people get a hold of you? I mean, how can they, if they want to reach out to you, how can they find you? Petlosspsychotherapy.com. Okay. And there they can put in a a request for a 15 minute consultation. They can call and leave a voicemail. And I always return every call. I may not be able to see every person, but I return every call. Wow. 
I think I think we will probably have you on again later this year when we uh, start I'd be circling happy back. To come yes, on. no, I think I'd you're be honored, definitely fascinating. Honored to yeah, I definitely yeah. maybe we'll maybe we'll do a webinar with uh, her uh, with Nancy and Nina. That would be a fascinating webinar that oh, we could do. Yeah. Absolutely, I'd be honored. This is a wonderful opportunity. This is a large net. You're going to help so many people. In oh. ways that I'm one therapist who meets with someone for one hour and we're casting a large net. And I, I'm so grateful that you've invited me into this net. Oh, oh Nancy, I, thank I you. think you're doing, yeah, thank I think you're you. doing the work. We're just helping you get out there. That's it, all it, we're it's doing. Our, it is our honor. It is our honor. Yeah, thank you, Nancy. All yes, so. Thank you so much, Nancy. And I, like I said, we definitely want to see you again. So thank you again so much for joining us. So I wish everyone peace. All right. Yes. Well, I hit the nail on the head on this one. I did good with Nancy. Wow. You, first of all, you, all, you, always do, you always do good. But I tell you what, no. we, we have had much discussion on, on pet loss and bereavement. Uh, but I think that I this opened up a whole new world and the words that she gave and the love bank and just the destabilization and just things that were so, uh, that, that meant so much. And, she uh, validated. You know, and, and like, validated. Validation. She validated yeah. so much. She validated everybody. You know what I mean? And yeah. It's okay, you know what I mean? It's okay to cry. It's okay to yeah. it's okay to do not. what you need to do. Yeah, it's okay not to. Yeah. It's okay to it's a, it it the validation alone. It's just it and the suggestions and I loved her. She she gave so much information and she had a not she had a very calming influence, but not only that I got, I got so much from her just in understanding and knowledge and absolutely beautiful conversation and filled with so much insight and knowledge. I'm, yeah. We're talking pet loss and grievance, and and especially this time of year, and pet grief, which is different. I, I was smiling. I mean, I'm talking about a sad I cry. I was. We're talking about a horrible subject, and I'm smiling. I felt like I was in therapy, and I feel refreshed, which is yeah, not, I do. Too. Yeah, I feel good, and and it's not a good subject. It's not a feel good yeah. subject, but I feel good. She made me feel good about myself. Like the weight has been lifted. That's what I felt because I when I got I said I got the chills, and I felt like a weight had been lifted in some way because it was her words, and I and I loved how she talked about you know she sees people in one hour sessions, and with this podcast. We're opening up this to everyone, and I and I hope our audience feels the same way that we do. Is being able to fill the uh, it's relief or validation, whatever we want to call it. But man, incredible! I I, w- I want to get a, I want to get a seminar. I want to get a webinar together. Yeah, I would love to get her and Nancy together. I mean, because or her and Nina. I'm sorry, sorry, Nancy. Yeah, her no. and Nina, Nina and Nancy. That would be fun. Those two together. I mean, they would yeah. rock. The, oh, we might have our. We might have. <laughs> you're gonna yell at me. We might have our Golden Girls. Oh, yes, yes, maybe, maybe. I think there's a. I think there's a, a couple of other people who want to join us in our Golden Girl troop. We can go We can make it. We can make it larger. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. But yeah, but yeah. What I, what a beautiful what a, what a beautiful beautiful woman. Yeah, beautiful. I like, mean, incredible, incredible conversation. You, if you have any issues or any any sadness, anything. I mean, if you are struggling with anything, I think an hour with her 
would help you just start crawling out of it. Just start. You know what I mean? I'm not saying that you can't or you, you know what I mean? But she just, uh, I, she just makes you feel good. She, you, you don't feel like you're, you don't feel bad. You just, you, you just, yeah. you feel validated. You feel truly the word, yeah. only word I keep coming up with is validated. You, you, you give yourself the grace to feel, you give yourself the grace to feel validated for the emotions that you're having. Yeah. Those are my, yeah. that's exactly what exactly. it is. Exactly. Exactly. And I think I'm going to, I'm going to back you up on that one and just say, out of every conversation that I've had about Moose, even though for the all the beauty and the goodness that we've been doing and that I've been doing, that we've been doing, and then everything that's going on, there still is a sense of sadness. There's always a sense of like, uh, sad, like the sadness and the oh. loss and the word. But this is just like, I, I honestly feel a weight has been lifted from me. Because you're honoring him. I, she validated yeah. what you're, she validated what you're doing for him because you are honoring him and you are memorializing yeah. him. She gave you the grace to realize what you're doing is what she did. Yeah. I, did. I, I almost, did. I almost feel like she, uh, yeah. she opened your eyes up to see what you were doing. So that way you could see it. She did. She did. She did. And I don't think no one has ever said that before. And, uh, and she definitely did. I cannot wait for, um, uh, I, I, I'd love to talk to her again uh, on, a, on a personal and a professional level. So, yeah, I think and, she's amazing. Good job, so. Jessica. A round of applause. <laughs> All right. Well, with that note, I want to try to bring, bring this up just a hair, you know what I mean? Not much, but you know, so I, I, I just, this was a great interview to end our January. It was a great interview to end our, you know what I mean? We wanted to try to end uh, our depression. I mean, I hate to say it that way. We wanted to end it on a positive note. And I think Nancy knocked it right out of the ballpark. I mean, she, she did a great job. I mean, I am smiling and I didn't think I could. I know, and that's a rarity, guys. That is a rare occasion that Jessica actually smiles. Maybe that celebration or that happiness button has actually gotten into you now. Can you believe it? <laughs> it's a happiness. You know what? I was sitting there while she was talking, and I have to share this with you because you might get it maybe a little bit. And she's sitting there talking, and we're talking about the grief of our pets, and you know what I mean? And she's talking about the holidays and that holidays, you know, I mean, some holidays might be harder than others and stuff like that because it, you know, I mean, they might, right? And I'm sitting there thinking, and I start laughing in my head because I'm sitting there laughing because I'm sitting there going, I think almost every one of our pets in my childhood has died on Christmas Eve. Seriously. Oh my God. I mean, every guinea pig I've ever owned, and I've owned at least a dozen, has died on Christmas Eve. Almost all my cats have died on Christmas Eve. And I think like half a dozen of my dogs have died on Christmas or Christmas Eve. My poor father has buried more animals on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, I mean, my poor dad, Leroy is amazing. I love Leroy. But I mean, it seems like, or Christmas break, it seems like Thanksgiving or Christmas, it seems like they always pass away that week. So, I mean, and my mother is like Miss Christmas. I mean, so it's like, uh, okay, that might validate that Grinch thing still for me. <laughs> I'm telling you. Oh my God. I just well, we're I didn't tell you that. No, 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 no. like, New Year, just amazing. And so what a way yes. to wrap up January. Super excited, January. guys. Excited. So February, and we're going to start off on a great note, positive, you know what I mean? So this was the perfect way to end our... our we're here, folks. Jessica just said we're going to like start February positive. That is memorialized. We're going to do it. She's going to start it positive. She's turned yep, over a new lead. I have what the so. <laughs> I am. I'm a pretty positive ishy person, you know. Yeah, let me put it this way: the glass is not half full, and it's not half it empty. You, you can know. always refill it. It's refillable. So, okay. all right. Yeah. But Thank you for spending this time with me today, yeah. and yeah, crazy good. 
All right. Thank our sponsors. You, I'll let you run with the sponsors. And I'm going to remind everybody after you thank the sponsors because we forgot to do it last week. Well, for heaven's sakes, we've got the great people from Forged and Form. We have Pet Premium. We have Volition Veterinary. We have Green Line Pet Supply. We have Zachary Tinkle. Uh, we have Augie Bones. And there is more coming on down the pike. Want to give a special shout out to Pet Eyes, Animal Health, Total Animal Health, um, as well as who else? Smalls Cat Food. Love you guys. Um, Thank you for being with us. Thank you for, you can All spend right. your time with any better. You're spending it here with us. We love I'm you. I'm just going to give a, yep, I'm going to give a shout out to Leroy and Naps, Kathy Delaney. Love you, Miss Kathy. And the last thing I want to say is how do you make your pet feel like family? Have a great one, guys. We'll see you in February. Talk to you soon. Thanks for listening to Pets Are Family. You can find us on all the channels now. Yes, all the channels now. So make sure you share us with your friends, your families, and your coworkers, and anybody that has a pet. Make sure you like us, give us your feedback, tell us if anything that you want us to talk about, all that fun stuff. You can reach me at Jessica at PetsOurFamily.net or Trisha at PetsOurFamily.net. Thank you for everything that you guys do, but make sure you like us, subscribe, um, check us out on YouTube. You can always see what we're up to. And we want to thank all of our sponsors, all of the people that support us. We love every one of you and we can't thank you enough. And remember, check out Moose's March, Moose'sMarch.com, M O O S E S M A R C H dot com. Come check us out. Talk to you guys soon. We'll see you next week. Bye.